Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 5 under the category Route Stability Criteria. The problem is the characteristic polynomial of the system is given like this. Determine the location of routes on the S plane and hence the stability of the system. Again we have to check whether the system is stable or not and we have to find where the routes are located on the S plane. Right. So, this is the given characteristic equation. Here, the maximum power is 7. So, this characteristic equation is having 7 roots totally. Right. Since the 7 is an odd number, we have to select the odd coefficients. You see, 7, 5, 3 and 1. And here, s to the power 6, then 6, 4, 2 and s to the power 0. Right. The next step is forming Routh array. So, here coefficient of s, the maximum power is s to the power 7, right? So, right here s to the power 7 and s to the power 6, right? So, coefficient of s to the power 7 is 1 and s to the power 5 is 24, s to the power 3 is 24 and s to the power 1 is 23, right? And the next thing is s to the power 6. So, coefficient of s to the power 6 is 9, s to the power 4 is 24, s square is 24 and s to the power 0 is 15, right? When you look at the second row, you see all these numbers are divisible by 3. So, I am dividing it by 3. So, when, when you divide it by 3, 9 by 3 is 3, 24 by 3 is 8 and here again 8 and 15 by 3 is 5, right? So, so here I have rewritten the s to the power 6 row. You see s to the power 6 is usually like this. But here we had after dividing it by 3 we had simplified numbers right. So here I am writing it right. And the next thing is we have to find s to the power 5. The procedure is as usual 3 into 24 minus 8 into 1 divided by this corner element 3 right. You see here I had written the steps, right? 3 into 24 minus 8 into 1 divided by 3. So when you solve this, you are getting the answer as 21.33. Okay, you write it here. And the next thing is, you just hide this column. So how to multiply? Again, 3 into 24 minus 8 into 1 divided by 3. You see here I had written that one. Right. Again, when you solve this, you are getting the number as 21.33. And finally, we are going to find the third element. So, you can leave this column and this column. Right. You have to leave both these columns. So, how to multiply? 3 into 23 minus 5 into 1 divided by 3. You see, here I had written that step. Right. So, again, when you solve this, you are getting 21.33. So, for all the three places, we are having the same number. So, you just write it here. Since all these are divisible by 21.33, I am dividing. So, finally, I am getting 1, 1 and 1. Right. So, we know s to the power 7 and s to the power 6 from the given problem and s to the power 5 since all the three are same. We are dividing it and we are getting 1, 1 and 1. Right. The next step is we have to find s to the power 4. So, how to find s to the power 4? As usual, 1 into 8 minus 1 into 3 divided by 1. Right. You see here, I had written the steps right. 1 into 8 minus 1 into 3 divided by 1. When you solve this, you get the answer as 5. And the next thing is, Again, we need our second term, right? So, you can leave this column. How to multiply? 1, one into 1 into 8 minus 1 into 3. Again, divided by this corner element 1. So, when you solve this, again, you are getting the answer as 5 here. And finally, the last term. So, 1 into 5 minus here it is 0, right? So, we can leave this. 1 into 5 minus 0 into 3 is anyways 0 divided by 1 again. So, here I had written that 1 into 5 minus 0 into 3 by 1. This gives you 5 again, right? Again, the three values are same. So, here the s to the power 4 row is 5, 5 and 5. So, I am dividing this row by 5. So, I am getting 1, 1 and 1, 
right. So here I had written the simplified form. You see s to the power 5 is row of 1's and again s to the power 4 also has row of 1's, right. And the next step is we have to find s cube, right. So for how to find s cube, as usual, 1 into 1 minus 1 into 1. So 1 minus 1 is what? 0. So here the first element is 0. Again, to find the second element, you can leave this column. How to, how to multiply here? Again, you have to 1 into 1 minus 1 into 1 is again 0. So finally, s to the power 3 has row of zeros. Right, whenever you have row of zeros, what to do? You have to find the axillary equation. How to find the axillary equation? The row before row of zeros will contribute the axillary equation. Right, so this is our row of zeros. So this row will give you the axillary equation. Here, what is the maximum power? It is s to the power 4. So how to write the equation? 1 into s to the power 4 plus 1 into s square plus 1 into s to the power 0. Right. You see s to the power 4 and s square and 1 into s to the power 0. So this is our axillary equation. So after finding the axillary equation we have to differentiate that equation with respect to s. So when you differentiate s to the power 4 again this is the formula a to the power n is nothing but n into a to the power n minus 1 is the formula. So here s to the power 4. So after differentiating this gives 4 s to the power 3 plus again s square when you differentiate this becomes 2 s yes, right. So the coefficients form the s to the power 3 row. So coefficient of s cube is 4 and s to the power 1 is 2. You see here these two numbers are divisible by 2. So I am dividing. So after dividing I am getting the answer as 2 and 1. Right. So finally I am forming the full route array. You see. S to the power 3 is initially row of zeros. Right. So after differentiating the S to the power 3 row has 2 and 1 as its numbers. So here I am writing 2 and 1. Right. The next step is we have to form S square. How to form S square? You see 2 into 1 minus 1 into 1 divided by 2 gives your S square. Right. So, so this is your S square. So forming S square is 2 into 1 minus 1 into 1 divided by 2. You see here I had written those steps. So when you solve you are getting the answer as 0.5. Okay. So write here 0.5. Then again how to find the second element? You have to hide this one. So 2 into 1, right? 2 into 1 minus 0 divided by 2. So 2 by 2 which gives you 1. So this is your second element, right? And the next step is we, have, we are forming s to the power 1. So how to find s to the power 1 here? So s to the power 1 is again 0.5 into 1 minus 1 into 2 divided by 0.5. You see here I had written the steps. So when you solve this you are getting the answer as minus 3. So right here minus 3. Right. And finally we have to form s to the power 0 element. So s to the power 0 is nothing but you see minus 3 into 1 minus 0 into 0.5 divided by minus 3. So again minus 3 into 1 is again minus 3. So when you solve this equation you are getting the answer as 1 here. So, just substitute the value of 1, right. So, finally, we have formed our route array. The maximum power is s to the power 7 and we have to find the value still s to the power 0, right. Again, we have to look at the first column, right. So, in the first column, how many sign changes are there? There are totally 2 sign changes, right, because here previously all are positive and only from S square row we are having sign change. So plus to minus is one sign change and minus to plus is your another sign change. Right. So totally there are two sign changes. So what it means? So since there is sign change the system is unstable. Right. 
and since there are two sign changes it means that two roots are lying on the right half of s plane and five roots are lying on the left half of s plane right because only two sign changes so totally there are seven roots so among these seven roots only two roots are lying on the right half of s plane and the remaining five roots are lying on the left half right so the first part of the problem is over the second one is we have to comment on the location of the roots exactly because why we are going here is you see whenever there is a row of zeros there may be a possibility of location of roots on the imaginary axis right so we have to check whether any roots are present on the imaginary axis that can be found by finding the roots right i'll explain you now again we have to take our axillary equation after taking axillary equation we have to solve this and we have to find out the roots okay then we can easily locate the roots so s to the power 4 plus s square plus 1 is equal to 0 so for simplifying i am taking s square is equal to x so when s square is equal to x we can replace s to the power 4 as x square and this s square is x and this plus 1 equal to 0 right and here from this you see the value of x square is 1 therefore a equal to 1 and x is also 1 so b equal to 1 the value of c is 1 right here we are going to use this formula so minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a this is the basic formula right so now ju just substitute the values uh, minus 1 that is b is 1 plus or minus root of b is 1 1 square minus 4 into a is also 1 so 4 into 1 into c is 1 again divided by 2 into 1 so when you solve this you see you will be getting expression like this Minus one plus or minus here one minus four is nothing but minus three, right? So square root of minus three by two. So square root of minus one is nothing but j, right? So here I am writing it as minus one plus or minus j into root three divided by two. So finally the value of x is find out, but x is equal to here you see x is equal to s square. So just now replace x by s square. That is s square is equal to minus one plus or minus j root three by two, right? But we have to know the values of yes. How to find yes? It is very complicated when you take square root of this number. So we are converting this polar form to rectangular form, right? So once you convert this to rectangular form, the value of s is given by Plus or minus one. That is square root of one into angle one twenty degree, right? So when you take square root of one, that becomes one here. And when you take square root for an angle, you should divide it by two. So one twenty by two will give you plus or minus one with sixty degree, right? Again, I am converting this into polar form. So When you convert, we are getting the answer as point five plus j point eight double six, right? And the next thing is, s is equal to plus or minus one with an angle of minus one twenty degree, right? You see, this is the characteristic equation with the power of what is its maximum power? Its power is four. So you have to find four roots for this equation, right? So this rectangular format is for this expression that is minus one plus j root three by two. Okay, I am having this part, and here this is for minus one minus j root three by two. Okay, I am converting this polar form to rectangular format here. So again, you see this is the value of s, and here again this is s. Hope you people understand, right? Totally four roots. Okay, you see, totally uh, this expression should have four roots. So here the value of s square is given as this. It is tough to find the square root for this type of number. So I am converting this polar form to rectangular form. So first I am considering this minus one plus j root three by two. I am converting this polar form to rectangular form. So I am having. Two roots, right? Plus or minus. I am having two roots. That is plus 
point five plus j point eight double six is one root, and minus of point five plus j point eight double six is another root, right? And the next thing is I am taking minus one minus j root three by two. This is my second root. So here once I am converting this into rectangular form. After taking square root, I am getting the answer as plus or minus one with an angle of minus sixty degree. Again, I am I am converting this into polar form. So here I am having roots like this, right? Finally, we had find out the roots of the axillary equation, and now we are going to locate these roots on the S plane, right? You see, these are the four roots, right? You see. Plus point five plus j point eight double six is is your first root, and the second one is I am moving this minus sign inside. So what happens? Minus point five minus j point eight double six six. This is your second root, right? And again, you see, plus point five minus j point eight double six is this is your third root, and finally minus point five plus j point eight double six six is your Fourth root. I mean, whenever I move this minus sign inside, this plus point five becomes minus, and this minus into minus gets plus. That is our final root, right? Now we are going to locate these roots. Okay, this is your S plane, right? This is your real path, and this is your sorry, this is your real axis, and this is your imaginary axis. Here you see, both these are with plus sign, right? So where the roots will be located? Your roots will be located somewhere here. Since it is point five, let us take point five here and point eight double six here. Okay, this root will be lying on your first quadrant. And second, you see both are with the negative signs. Here both are with the negative signs mean you see these are these both are with the negative sign. So the location will be in the third quadrant. So here I am locating that root. Right. Look at your third root. That is the real term is plus. And the imaginary term is minus. So here real term is plus, and here the imaginary term is minus. So it will be here in the fourth quadrant. And finally, the real term is minus, and imaginary term is positive. Here the real term is with a minus, and imaginary term is positive. So here I am having my fourth root. Right. Now tell me where the roots are located. Is any roots located on the imaginary axis? No. Because no roots are located on the imaginary axis, so only two roots are located on the right-hand side of the S plane, and the remaining five roots lie on the left-hand side of your S plane. Right. So here we are making a final statement that no roots are lying on the imaginary axis. Why we are going to this step? Because we are having row of zeros. Whenever there are row of zeros, there may be a chance that roots may get located on the imaginary axis. So, in order to check that, we are going for the previous step. Just now we have seen now we are going for that step, right? So, finally, the result is from the road stability criteria. The first column has two sign changes. Therefore, two roots are lying on the right half of S plane. Just now I have drawn and show it to you, right? And the remaining five roots should lie on the left half of S plane. Since there is sign change, the system is unstable. Even though the system has row of zeros, there are no roots lying on the imaginary axis, right? Hope you people understand well. Thank you.